stay tuned because for the next 60 minutes, Motorsports Unlimited is on the air. Hi, I'm Jerry Bryant, and these are the lovely ladies of Motorsports. And all this hour, we're going to have 60 minutes of action-packed excitement. All kinds of exciting things will happen. And we got the famous Bill Wilt, and we got all kinds of other good stuff that's happening all this hour. Motorsports Unlimited, 60 minutes of nonstop action. So let's go to the studio right now, huh? Jerry, and hi everybody. Welcome to the studio headquarters of Chicagoland's most watched, most talked about access television series. I'm Janine Lauschott and this is the 1086th edition of Motorsports Unlimited. Today we're reaching back 20 years when we went through great efforts to teach our audience how to weld. Of course, 20 years ago we were still learning how to do television and developing the Motorsports Unlimited look. We hadn't even begun using an announcer at that time. Let's check out how Bill used to have our Motorsport girls open the program. Hi, I'm Gina Niles. I'm Angie Kay, and we welcome you to Motorsports Unlimited Part 107. Today we're going to learn how to weld. At least I'm learning how to weld. That's right, I wasn't there, but Angie actually got to puddle? We'll find out what that means and much more. Let's join Angie, Chris, and Bill. A little strange without an announcer. Hi, I'm Mei Chin. Now let's join Bill as he gets started explaining how to weld. Angie, you've got to admit, I take you girls a lot of nice places. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, we are in a, uh, I guess we could call it a garage, sort of a, sort of a race car shop, a garage, uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and we are here to do what today, Christine? Uh, you're going to teach us how to weld. Right. Now, if we've done this right and put this program together already... We can get the, a job welding when you're done, right? No, no, that's <laughs> no, I was going to talk TV stuff. Uh, what I was going to say was that the girls would have already introduced what this show is going to be about today. So I should say uh, thank you, girls, back at Studio Central. See, that's TV oh, stuff. Okay. It's the inserts we're going to do tomorrow that we haven't done. Oh, okay. Well, any, oh, okay, okay, get it? <laughs> okay. Uh, in any event, yeah, we're going to talk about welding today. I've been talking about doing this show for a long time. Uh, for a number of reasons. Number one, uh, in fact, I think I'll show you this right off the bat and make a little tough editing job for me right off the bat. Uh, and Dan, our uh, cameraman, uh, I don't want you to do anything with this. Uh, you just take and uh, keep shooting at us. Uh, but I want to show our audience, let me show you what you can build if you can weld. We'll be right back. <laughs> And that will give you an idea of what you can build if you weld. Now, Christine, what did I just show them? I don't know. Yeah, see, this is a trick. This I think is I know. The <laughs> what? The Goodyear blimp or something like that? No, 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 no. What I showed them was Roger Gustin's lava machine. You know, Ken, Ooh, so Ken, yeah. Ken Sawinski, we should mention, uh, uh, who's been working with our show an awful lot lately, is also a very gifted uh, race car artist, and we did show some of his work on the program not too long ago. Uh, one of the things he... Not only that, if you learn how to weld, you could build a war bike. Well, there you go, too. <laughs> but I wanted to say that, uh, that uh, because he is apparently good friends with Roger and has mm -hmm. become friends after doing the work for his car and all that kind of stuff, you know, has, uh, you know he's wanted to do the paintwork on it. Right. Uh, he asked Roger if Roger would send us some shots of his lava car, his jet car in action, and he did, and I thought that would be a perfect thing to tell the folks. Now, I don't know if just being able to weld will mm -hmm. let you build a lava machine. No, but wait a minute. But it's, you know, it's like sewing. Let's face facts. Uh, and I, I'm going to be accused of being a sexist here, and I suppose I'm guilty. But uh, you guys are girls, and I know you both know how to sew. And it doesn't make any difference if you're going to sew a pair of slacks up for yourself or a skirt, or if you're going to do some kind of a fashion for a Paris fashion show. You're going to have to know how to use a sewing machine, right? Correct. That helps. Okay, well, it's the same thing with this. If you're going to take and weld a lawnmower, or if you're going to build something like the lava machine, the, uh, the jet car, you need to know how to weld, regardless of what you're going to right. do with it once you've acquired the skills. Right. So we're going to do that, and I have taught, gee, dozens of people to weld over the years. And what I want to tell them, and by the way, I want to, before our audience runs away from us, uh, 
Don't go away, folks, because I want you to get through this. This is going to be interesting, I promise you. Anybody that watches Motorsports Unlimited knows that we have our own little ways of, of, of livening these things up. And uh, one of the things I'm going to promise you, hopefully, if we know how to do it before the end of this show, we have got a very, I don't know, Angie, would it be fair to say a very hot video of you uh, to show? Ooh. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. <laughs> okay, this is a, a piece that we yeah, put that in. Yeah, that would be a good way to say it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, and, and I'm not going to tell the audience where it's going to be put in, but somewhere during the course of this program, we're going to insert your um, video, which, what, what do we call it? We call it sort of a little star search video, right? Right. Right, because for lack of a better term, but we all know that uh, one of the reasons that Star Search, or perhaps in my judgment, the only reason they get an audience is because of those uh, spokesmodel, uh, what do you call them, music, not music, what? Television spoke models, spokesmodels. Well, what do they call the little piece where they have them in the bathing oh. suits and all that? Oh, uh, they're called fashion videos, something like that. Okay, that's what we'll call it too then, a fashion video. Hey, anyway, we've got one of you and this is going to be fun and it was, it was, you had a good time doing it, right? Oh, definitely. Okay, uh, and um, I think this is the second one. We did one with a girl named Marie Erickson a year or so ago, uh, and that came out pretty well, and I think this one is uh, certainly equally as good, and hopefully we'll get better as we go along with it. Anyhow, we're not going to tell you uh, when we're going to put it in the program, so you've got to stay and watch the welding, <laughs> okay? And Angie, you're real excited about learning how to weld, right? I've never in my life thought of it, but now I'm really enthusiastic about it. <laughs> okay, and Christine, you're excited about learning how to weld? Well, I guess uh, as long as I've known you, I should already know how to weld. <laughs> Do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. First of all, let's start out by defining it. Let's talk a little bit about what welding is. Uh, Angie, do you have any idea what welding is? Well, I had told you before that I thought it was the process of soldering together two pieces of metal, but you told me there was a big difference between soldering and welding, so I'm kind of stuck. Okay, there certainly is, and that's something that we do want to say here. Um, Many things, one of the problems with newspeak and advertising lingo and everything is they often take and cloud the facts and, 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 and uh, in my opinion, uh, don't do a service to the public by giving them misinformation. The process of welding, if I suppose if we could define it perhaps in lay people's terms, the process of, of welding is joining two pieces of metal together uh, by bringing them back, at least in the area where you're joining them together, by bringing them back to their molten state, mm -hmm. letting them blend together, adding filler metal, the same kind of filler metal that you that the, that the material you're welding together is, adding filler metal uh, and then letting it cool so it becomes one piece. Now the important thing about this that I want the audience to understand is that welding is the one process where you end up with the material being one piece. If you have two pieces of material and you weld them together and you've done it properly, it ends up being one piece. Now you mentioned soldering before. Soldering is a very popular thing for electrical connections and also many things like a radiator, an automobile radiator is soldered together. Mm -hmm. However, soldering I'd like is more like gluing something together. The pieces don't become one piece. You put two mm -hmm. pieces of metal together and the solder is, it's not, everybody's going to be mad because it's not really a glue because solder is, you know, it's lead and but it is a metal. you're trying to make it easily understood. I'm trying to make it easily understood. So think of it that way. Soldering something is like gluing something together. It doesn't really make them one piece, as I'm sure you're aware. Uh, same thing with brazing. Have you ever heard of brazing? No. No. Never. Christine? Yes, I have. Okay. Do you have any idea what that is? No. All right. Brazing, and I, well, I'll, I'll, first I'll tell you what it is. It's very similar to soldering, except it's a whole lot stronger. And instead of using, in the case of solder, you use lead. And in the case of brazing, you use a brass, uh, it's not really just brass, it's, a, it's a, 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 an alloy, all right? But uh, it's much higher temperature. Now let me explain the reasons for the differences in these things. When you weld something, you have to return the metal to its molten state. Do you guys both know that metal, as it's originally uh, created, uh, is in a molten state at some point? Um, that means that it's more like a liquid, it's not... It is well, a liquid. Right. Okay, you know that. Yeah, that's kind of like lava in volcanoes. It's molten lava before it becomes hard crusted lava. Before it becomes like rock, exactly. Right. Okay, it's the same, it's the same yeah. thing then. Uh, so during the process of, of making uh, steel, it's in a molten state, and then it's done, they do a number of things. They forge it, or they cast it, or they extrude it. There's a number of things that can be done with it. Uh, but in any event, at some point, it's in a molten state, and that's how it comes into the form it is. They make sheets out of it, bars out of it, and what have you. All right. Now, in order to take and join two of those pieces together and end up having it be one piece, it has to be returned to that molten state, at least right in that area where you're joining them together. It has to be returned to a molten state to make one piece out of it, all right? The problem with that is there's many things that you can't do that with because it'll destroy the, the, the part that it is or what have you. Uh, so in some cases, maybe you'll, use, you'll braze it together. Now, brazing requires the metal to be heated up relatively hot, maybe up, as, if in the case of steel, maybe up to 1,400, 1,500 degrees. 
but that's not a molten state. You might be starting to get it to glow a little bit, but it's not molten at that point. In other words, you would choose the brazing over the uh, welding because you're afraid of damaging what you want to put together, attach together? Yes, that's one of the reasons. Or something might damage what your uh, warp it or something like that? Well, that's correct. That's one of the reasons you would do it. There are other reasons, sometimes manufacturing cost considerations, things like that. But essentially, the advantage that brazing gives you is that you don't have to heat the metal up to a molten state. Mm -hmm. It's just below the molten state, and what happens is, it, is the metal's pores open up. Just by applying heat to it, the pores tend to open up. And then when you take brazing rod and uh, through a series of fluxes, and this isn't going to be a brazing show, so we won't go into that too deeply, uh, that you take and you apply this brazing rod through heat after you get it up hot enough, uh, and it acts like glue, but a super, super strong glue. Brazing is quite strong, and it has a couple of other advantages. For example, and I, again, this isn't a metallurgy show either, so we won't go into all of this, but as an example, if you wanted to uh, attach a piece of steel to a piece of cast iron, now those are dissimilar materials, and you can't weld dissimilar materials together, but you could braze those two pieces together. So while you couldn't end up with it as strong as a weld, the thing to remember is the weld is, of course, much stronger. It makes it one piece than brazing. But brazing is quite strong. It's quite a strong joint when you're done, but it can only be as strong as the braze itself, which is essentially brass, and obviously that's not as strong as steel. Follow so far? Okay, now, suppose you have something even less temperature tolerant. Uh, in the case of an automobile radiator, that's made of very, very fine tubes. Uh, it can, tolerates very little heat. Now we need a metal that operates at even a lower heat. Now we use the brass brazing rod, okay? Now we need something that operates at even less temperature, and that, of course, lead is solder. Mm -hmm. So those things are soldered together because we can't afford to, to put very high heat into them, or you'll just take and lose all the pieces you're trying to put together so that you use solder. But again, solder, of course, is weaker, again, than brazing. So that's a that's a much weaker process. Is any of this? Are we following this at all? Making sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I didn't know that uh, solder was lead. Ah. Okay. Well, it's well, it, it has other things in it. It has flux in it and all that. But basically, it's lead. It's yeah. a lead compound. And the reason you use that, of course, is because uh, it has a, it, it. You know, lead will melt at you know seven eight hundred. In fact, they have some leads that will melt like at, you know some very that they use for electronics and everything that are down to like four hundred degrees. They're very very cool. Uh, that's a very cool temperature. Now. The problem is, if we're going to weld two pieces of material together, the problem is we need some way of bringing that molten that metal to its molten state, at least in that local area. Correct? You can understand that? Correct. So in other words, you'd need something that puts out a very high temperature, and you need to heat it up. That's correct. Now, there are several ways of doing that. Um, the most basic way is oxyacetylene welding. And I'm a person, by the way, and I should tell our audience right off the bat, I'm a person that believes that if you are going to learn how to weld, and if particularly somebody comes to me to learn how to weld, they're gonna learn how to oxyacetylene weld first. And the reason for it is it's the most basic form of welding. And if you can oxyacetylene weld, you can stick weld, you can heliarc weld, you can do anything off of those skills. It, but, but it's also far and away, oxyacetylene is the most versatile kind of welding because you can also braze with it and you can also solder with it. You can do a number of things with oxyacetylene. Uh, you can cut material with it. And it's a skill that uh, many times, and I'll explain that as we go along the program today, but many times uh, there are all kinds of new devices out on the market uh, for welding the, um, these very inexpensive MIG welders, and I'll explain what that is. And unfortunately, people buy them, and they sort of get even they even get kind of good at them. And those things are really crutches because these guys really can't weld, but they can sort of run the MIG welder. What I would like them to do is start at this, become skilled at oxyacetylene welding, and then move along to where they can become accomplished at stick welding, then go to TIG welding, then go to MIG welding, and now you're a, you're an accomplished welder. And there's so many things along the way. You know, you I think that it was as complicated as it is, but I know, like with the acetylene wel uh, welder, you can cut through metal, correct? Well, that's correct, certainly. But you can't do that with a, um, like a heliarc welder or other, or, you know. Well, there, there are, there are contraptions that they put together to, to allow people with those other kind of welders to, uh, to cut with, but I still say there is nothing other than the new plasma arc. They have a new plasma arc cutter well, that's, that's I mean, great. Well, something that someone could afford. Right, but, the, but, but essentially the, the most versatile device without question, in fact, we've got it over here. Now if I can ask Dan, our cameraman, to swing over and, and take a look at these uh, torches. And Angie, if you could take and go over there and unwind that uh, thing for me, the, uh, uh, you, you better go around the front of it because uh, you're going to get yourself hooked. Otherwise you're going to end up with it. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, that's probably enough. Here, let me help you. 
All right, good. Uh, if you step over and come back here, this is really cramped quarters here today, folks. So bear with us. I hope you'll bear with us. Now, this is the torch. And obviously what we've got to do is we've got to make fire come out of here that's hot enough to melt steel, correct? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, in order to do that, uh, we are going to take and put uh, some gas through this, and I'm going to take and show you this. As a matter of fact, now I'm going to need some help with this because we've got to use this microphone. Uh, and Christine, this is that unidirectional mic, so you've got to kind of keep it in my face okay. in order for me to be heard. Uh, I'm going to walk, well, let me see, how can I do this? Angie, hold this. Let me walk over here. Dan, maybe you can uh, pan back over here again. Uh, Angie, if you come over here, I'd like you to take and open this valve. Uh, it's okay. Now, what you've done is this is oxygen, and this is acetylene. Let me get this one too. Okay, they're probably a little bit too tight for you guys to do. All right, we've got oxygen and acetylene. Now, one of the things that I want to take and make sure, let me walk back in front of you again. Okay, well, I can do it right now. Uh, matter of fact, Angie, I'll tell you what we need. The um, striker over there. Uh, can you get the striker? As I've said, I hope our audience Angie, forgets. Uh, the adjustable uh, wrench. Right there. That's it. That's it. That's a striker. Yeah. Okay, come on back. All right, what this is is so you don't have to fumble with In fact, this is real old-fashioned. I'm sure a lot of people in our audience are going to laugh that are very very uh, familiar with welding because they have new electronic ones and everything. And this is a real old-fashioned thing. And, and essentially, all this thing is going to do is make sparks, okay? And it's a way of being able to light the torch uh, without uh, having to get a match out or a lighter or something like that. You have to have something that makes a little bit of fire. Now, first thing we have to do is we have to take and set the pressures. The most common mistake that people make that I have... Uh, Many folks weld, they'll weld at gas stations for years and things like that, but they, they sort of self-taught themselves and everything, that's fine. And often they'll work with me for a while and I can help them be a better welder very, very briefly uh, by just a couple of things. Perhaps the most common, there are probably two real common mistakes. The most common mistake is not knowing how to set the pressures on the tanks. Now obviously the, each one of these tanks uh, has uh, two gauges on it. I'm going to walk back over there again. And Angie and Chris, why don't you both come on over here, please. Angie, come up here. And Christine? No, over there is fine. Okay. Uh, there are two gauges on each one of these uh, tanks. One tells you the amount of pressure in the tank. All right, how much you've got left. Okay. Uh, that's this one in this, in this case, and this one over here in this case. The other one tells you how much pressure you're running through the line. Does that make any sense, Chris? Yes. All right. Uh, oh, you have to know that. Yes, you do. The most common mistake that I've found that self-taught welders make is that they don't realize that the number on the tip is a reference guide for the amount of pressure that should run through the line. Is now, right? yeah. Now, as an example, Christine, would you go over there and get one of those other tips? Any particular one? Uh, no, uh, just uh, just grab any one of them. That's fine. All right. Now, take a look at it and see if you can find a number on it. What is it? One E. Right, that's correct. Uh, the E refers to, in this case, is a, is a different thing. It refers to a brand on yeah, it. But, but that, uh, doesn't, that doesn't indicate how you would want, how much you would want the pressure to be, though. Yes, it does. That means that this tip would require one pound of running pressure. All right. Now take the torch in your hand and see what tip is on that one. This one might be a little too corroded to Yeah, see. it might be a little bit dirty, and there it is. All right, this one is a number two. Uh, that tells us two pounds of running pressure. All right? Okay, now, oh, all right. now, now hold on to the torch. Now, we'll show you what that means. Angie, maybe you can hold this. Uh, the green hose is oxygen, okay. and the red hose is acetylene. And by the way, all of these hoses have left and right hand threads so you can't mix them up and hook the wrong one onto the wrong thing. All right, so. Yeah, that would be dangerous. It would be very dangerous, all right. So first let's open up the acetylene. That's this uh, one here on the red. Just take and open that up. And you want to open it for this purpose. Yeah, you open it up quite all a bit. Way. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's yeah. enough. That's enough, yeah. Okay, now what have we got here? Take a look at the pressure. Almost seven. 
Right, almost seven pounds. So that's way too much then, right? right. Okay, so we'll take and turn. This was a, num a number two, right? So you want two. Right, and I'm going to, well, I'm gonna, now, Dan, can we get in fairly tight on this gauge now as we take and readjust this so the audience can see what we're talking about? And I'm going to hold the microphone for a second over by the torch so they can hear that we've got the, uh, the, uh, the uh, gas flowing. Were you able to hear that, uh, do you think, Dan? You don't know. You, you were able to hear it? Okay, we will presume that, uh, that he heard it. Um, I'm getting a, a high side right now from our cameraman because uh, he's getting concerned that we have to change the tapes. Uh, we'll be right back for this kind of excitement. And don't forget, we've got Angie's hot video here, so don't go away okay. and don't go to those networks. We've got stuff they don't have. Uh, we'll be right back, folks. <laughs> As you can tell, this material was shot even before Chuck Gitzenthaler started doing the camera work. Dan Schmidt was on camera. While he's changing tapes, let's meet the girls who participated 20 years ago. Hi, I'm Angie Kay. And I'm Chris Schutz. Now, let's get back to the welding lesson. We're back. Uh, that wasn't too hard. Now, we were just leaving and we were going to take and adjust this pressure uh, for, the, for the flowing pressure of the number two tip, right? And you said you had a question. Yes. Um, how do you get the pressure to be lowered? Ah, we're going to have Angie do that. Angie, can you slide between Chris and the, well and the uh, torches here? Okay, step over here. Now, do you see this out here? Okay, I want you to turn that counterclockwise until you get this down to about two pounds. Uh, a little bit lower. Okay, now, now that's going to be too low. Yes, yeah, so I can. Okay. Uh, easy. Okay, now, I have found through experience over the years a couple of things. Number one, uh, for every 10 foot of hose that you have on, you kind of have to add another pound of running pressure on it. Uh, it it's a, it, yeah, it gets involved with physics and all that, but anyhow, we've got about 25 feet of hose. So for number two tip, also, the tips certainly aren't new anymore after years of use and they've been cleaned a number of times so the size actually gets a little, a little larger variable. right so we might have like a <laughs> two and a half now so instead of running this right at two pounds let's bring it up to about uh, three and a half boy is that only something you would know through pardon me is that something you'd only know through experience um, you know well that that's true but that's why we do a class like this uh, for folks okay Christine if you shut that valve off now all right, now open the oxygen valve. That's the green, the green hose. Now, Angie, you can stay out here because I'm going to have you adjust that one too. Okay, now if you'll notice, these numbers are not close together at all, so we almost have to kind of guess at this thing. All right, because uh, the, you know, with the oxygen, because you might use it for cutting, you might be up to 70, 80, 90 pounds. Uh, the numbers aren't nearly as closely spaced as this. It only goes up to 30 pounds. So uh, I'm going to almost base this a little bit by sound. I can hear it. You hear the hiss go away? Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm going to take and put the microphone by the th so the audience can hear it. All right, I'm going to judge it right there. Christine, you can go ahead and close that now. And Angie, if you'll step back there. Yes, team. Are you judging this on the same three and a half pounds is what you're looking for? That's correct. It, it, as I said, it's a number two tip. So roughly number two tip is a guideline number two, uh, about two pounds of, and by the way, I should say running pressure because uh, I don't know, uh, Dan, can we get a tight shot on the gauge again here? For example, now we set this one at about three and a half pounds. And I don't know if it's real visible to our audience, but the needle, now that we've turned it off, uh, is up to around four and a half pounds. And Christine, if you'll just open up that acetylene gauge again while the camera is tight on that, the, the red one, and just open it up and we'll see the needle drop. Now, were you able to see that, Dan? Okay, great. Uh, he's nodding his head. Okay, you can close it again and you'll see the needle come up again. So we're talking about running pressure. It's running pressure, so you, you set those with the, with, the, with the valves open. Go ahead, Dan. And on both, you want it to be the pressure to be the same on both tanks. That's correct. And remember, I added a little bit because I've got a 25-foot hose on here and also because the tips have been cleaned many times over the years and the hole, uh, the tip of the hole, which is what the number really means, it's, uh, it's a formula for how, many, how much gas flows. But in any event, uh, because it's a little larger than it was when it was first made, we just add a little bit of pressure for that. So the, that's all you're talking about then is the actual um, hole in the tip. It doesn't have anything to do with the length 
of it or the curvature. It just has to do with the size of the hole. That's correct. It has to do with gas flow. And uh, I should say that when I've worked with people that, that weren't familiar with welding and they just kind of self-taught themselves, many times, uh, like a tip like this, uh, they'd have these things on 10, 15, 20 pounds uh, for a number. Yes, and it's very – uh, let's go back over here now. because dangerous. Well, no, it's not a matter of dangerous. Let me slide back now. If you girls, we're in real tight quarters here, so if you can step back that way, one on each side. All right, Angie, can you hold this mic for me now, please? And you got to keep it fairly close to my mouth because that's that, uh, no, in fact, in front of me uh, because of the type of mic that it is. Now, uh, the second way you regulate the pressure, that's the first way you do it. And by the way, I want to say something uh, to our audience. These happen to be uh, double dual diaphragm uh, dual diaphragm uh, regulators on these torches and I'll, I'll just take the second to walk right over here this is real important uh, when I was uh, a youngster my first set of torches I bought I was only 16 years old and I bought it with paper route money as a matter of fact as a matter of fact uh, this whole set is is mine but uh, and most of the stuff is what I bought when I was 16 and I'm 45 now I'll give you an idea how old some of yeah. this stuff is uh, but I did replace the regulators uh, eventually and if I were to do it over again uh, I would have bought the the uh, double diaphragm regulators to begin with the main advantage that they have first of all they're they're better made but the the main advantage that they have is if you forget and you leave the pressure adjustment on uh, which I do continuously now because it's quite well it's quite well but it's quite fine with these it's fine with the dual diaphragm ones with the single diaphragm gauges which are less expensive if you leave it on and you crack open the tank it's real possible to blow the diaphragm uh, and then you're gonna buy another set anyhow and it's almost keep escaping though and then when you go want to go and weld it's empty uh, no 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 that's not the problem the problem is that uh, when you have the single acting diaphragms uh, you can damage them very easily by opening this if this has any if this has got any pressure on it so I always recommend and you know how I feel about tools I, I I've never spent too much on tools but I burned myself a couple times by spending too little so I, I really recommend it's worth spending a few extra bucks and then on, both? on okay. yes on both of them and uh, it's it's wor it's really worth spending a few extra bucks for it uh, because in the long run you'll probably end up blowing a regulator eventually because it's real hard to remember every single time and remember if you turned it off or on yes uh, Andrew you just want me to hold the mic for you. <laughs> okay, and you've got to hold it. And matter of fact, you better move in closer. Uh, all right, now, I want to show, uh, Dan, I want to show you something here now. And I'm only going to show this one time because it's going to be a mess and the girls are going to be mad at me with the feathers and, and getting this all in their uh, in their hair and everything. Um, it's going to do a little black snake yes, in the air, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, okay, uh, I want to show the audience what this is. Now, in order to take and light a torch, after you've taken and set the pressures and all that, you now we don't open the valve all the way. We just crack the valve okay you break it loose and then back again and just open up just a little bit and you can actually kind of just want to hear it just a little bit all right and then I'll take okay now Dan can you come in tight on that come in real tight and tell me if you can see the black smoke you can see the black smoke all right you can see the black smoke all right now that's important and I want the I'm gonna try to get the black smoke on a blue background so you can see it uh, and I'm gonna turn it off now because again those things are a mess now, Angie, what's the black smoke? Um, I don't know. Some sort of compound that results from... I don't know! <laughs> okay, Christine, what's the black smoke? Carbon. Uh, it's unburned acetylene. And the point with it is, is that flame you just saw there was probably only about mm, four, five hundred, six hundred, seven hundred 600, 700 degrees at the most. It was all it was. And yet, we're going to take that very same gas. Now remember, I'm sure you know from your high school chemistry that oxygen does not burn, right? Right. Okay, you know that oxygen doesn't burn. Right. Okay, but it aids combustion. So now by adding oxygen to the acetylene, we're going to take this flame that's only maybe, you know, 500 degrees, something like that, and we're going to turn it into several thousand degrees, at least 3,000 degrees, all right, to bring steel up to molten temperature. So that's the difference it makes. Now, I, I didn't want to take and do that too often because you can, I don't know if you can see the little black stuff coming down now. It's almost like yeah. in little flakes. And it's going to be like carbon when you get it on. You won't like it at all. You'll be very unhappy. She so. not her feathers. Yeah, well, that's, that's <laughs> true. Okay, now, Angie, again, if you hold the microphone for me, please. All right, now, first we've got that. Now, in order to adjust this properly, you keep opening up the valve until the flame starts to feather on the end. Right there. Okay, you see how it's feathering at the end? Yeah. And now we start adding oxygen. Wow. Okay, now we're burning it up. Now we're burning it. You don't see any more of those, that black smoke. That's pretty bright. Oh, well, yeah. No, that's, well, it's also pretty hot. Now we're going to take and turn this. Okay, now 
uh, and I'm going to have to ask Dan if this is, uh, does this come out in the picture at all, Dan? Okay. Uh, if you'll notice, we have, really we have, at this point, two distinctly different flames. We've got this cone in here, all right, and we've got this long feathered portion out here. You see that? Now, if you were going to braise, this is about the temperature that you would use to braise. Uh, right at that point, it, the hottest part would be right right here, right where the end of that cone is. That's the hottest part of it, and we're probably in the area there of, oh, 16, 1700 degrees, something like that. Uh, and you'd be able to take and get the, the, the material up to a brazing temperature, all right? You wouldn't be able to get a material molten that way, but you'd be able to get up to a brazing temperature. Now we're going to add more oxygen, and I want you to, as we get, now you see what's happening? Uh, the blue part is getting shorter because you've added more oxygen, right? Right, and as we get further and further down, I want you to see that all of a sudden we're going to end up with a real small cone in here, and the other cone out here, and the third cone out here, if you want to call these things cone. And the proper way to have this adjusted for the hottest temperature is that this cone here has to go just inside the very smallest one. So I'm going to keep, you see it now? Mm -hmm. More, 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 right there. Now that's the hottest temperature this thing can make and right at the very end of that tiny cone in there. And that will very definitely melt steel. That's hot enough mm -hmm. to melt steel. Now, that's a, another common mistake that people make when they're uh, kind of self-taught welding. And by the way, I'm not criticizing that at all. I think it's great. A lot of people have done a lot of fine work self-taught yeah. welding. What we're trying to do is help here, you know. Right. Uh, this now is an efficient flame, all right? Now I'm going to turn this off for a second. Now we've got to ask our cameraman Dan. Uh, we're, did we get any of that? Did that make did it make sense at all? It was visible in the in the in the camera shot. Okay, he's giving me a thumbs up. Now you know what we ought to do right now before we go any further. Uh, this is taking longer to explain than I expected. Right, isn't we're going to run out of show before we get to anything else. <laughs> before we get to any, before you guys actually get to welding here, and I want you guys to to you know what, what we're going to do. As a matter of fact, it looks like we're going to do two or three shows because I'm surprised at how much time is going by here because I'm going to have you guys oxyacetylene weld, and I'm going to have you guys stick weld. And then I'm going to have you guys heliarc weld. So, and now that doesn't mean anything to you right now, right? No. Well, I've got news for you. If there's some racers out there watching right now, and they're going to know that a couple of girls are going to be heliarc welding, they're going to be upset. Uh, but I'm going to have them do it. You'll see, because I want I want to teach folks how to do this, and also want them to see. It. But first is oxyacetylene welding. This is the basis from all that all other welding springs from. If you can do this, you can do all the other stuff. And as a matter of fact, I really recommend that people just start by doing this, because this teaches you so much about the way metal behaves and the way it melts and all that that when you get up to something more sophisticated like this heliarc machine over here you get up to something more sophisticated like that uh, you don't learn those things because it instantly forms a puddle and well, we haven't even gotten into that yet so in any event what I want to do before we go any farther is I want to give the audience a chance a little rest from me going on and on and on so uh, let's put in in fact I think you're in this this is a little Tony Smith uh, piece a little Tony Smith entertainment piece yes I'm in it Okay, uh, let's enjoy uh, Tony Smith. I'm not sure what I'm going to put in here yet in editing, but uh, this is going to be something by uh, Tony Smith, the Tony Smith Show. Uh, don't go away, folks. Uh, we'll be right back. As I understand it, Bill used to tape local bands and use the material as an entertainment break during technical shows. Listen as Angie and Gina introduce the band. Now we're going to enjoy the Tony Smith Show band featuring their saxophonist, Diane Ellis. Diane is going to play a sax favorite, Back at the Chicken Shack.
back to the welding lesson in a moment, but I just want to mention at one time the Tony Smith Band was among the most popular of all local bands in Chicagoland clubs. We haven't heard from Tony in a long time and hope he's doing well. Bill says he was always a real professional to work with. Now let's continue learning how to weld. <laughs> All right, we're back, and of course, uh, Tony Smith always puts on. In fact, with any kind of luck, if we're doing this show correctly, <laughs> we returned to Studio Central, and the girls introduced the Tony Smith piece, right? Because they'll, by that time, know which one I'm going to put in. And then they will have popped in and said who was in the band and done all that. And that's exactly what's going to happen. Okay, you're confident. Oh, sure. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm I'll type it, and you'll edit it, and it'll be fine. <laughs> okay. In any event, we're back now, uh, and we're just realizing that this is going to take... Um, uh, Weeks. Yeah, more, much more time to, to teach somebody how to weld than I anticipated would. But let's get right into the oxyacetylene welding. At least we'll get that part of it in. Um, Angie, if you would, go over there and get uh, a practice piece of steel. That's those pieces that we've got laid over there. Well, you know, Bill, it's the same as uh, everything else. It always turns out that there's more involved than it at first blush. You know, it. Uh, this is really very interesting. I'm surprised. I'm thinking, you know, oh, we're going to learn how to weld. Mm. You know, but th <laughs> it's really... Well, it's really interesting. I do these shows. I, I want to do more of these kind of shows, and I do these for a reason. First of all, I want the audience to know that really, if you're interested and you're willing to learn and willing mm -hmm. to try, that anyone can weld. But I want them to know something else, that it's really quite a task to weld. It's quite a, it's quite a skill. It's, and, you mean to uh, weld good. To weld well. Now, well. <laughs> <laughs> now, I want to say something else, that welding, first of all, is science. I mean, there is a technical side to this, the, you know, knowing the temperatures that metals melt at, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, there's a science to welding, but there's also an art to it. And mm, some of the, the most gifted welders, the ones that can make the prettiest welds, the ones that can make, this, it's, it's, it's nearly an art form. In fact, I would go as far as to say it is, it is an art form when it's really, really done well. And that has to do with individuals, almost like a person's handwriting. Uh, so there's both the technical side of this and that you have to learn the science side and there's also an art to this, an art to being able to weld. And we'll see how good you guys are. Well, now, nobody can lay down a prettier welding bead than you can, believe ah, me. Ah, shucks. No, <laughs> they really are pretty. <laughs> In any event, what we're going to do now, I'm going to take, this is by the way for our audience, this is normal 20 gauge steel. 20 gauge steel for years and years and years has been used as the thing that you start out uh, people welding on uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's substantial enough so that it's not going to be like welding tin foil. Mm -hmm. uh, but on the other hand, it's thin enough so that you can't be sloppy and you will burn through a couple times, I'm sure. And that's the idea of learning how to manipulate the torch and learning how to deal with the heat and learning how to do something with it. So this is what we're going to need. Mm -hmm. Because we're girls, we might be afraid of it, too. Don't forget that. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, I, I might be afraid of it, too. Me, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, the way to learn how to weld is after we've gone through this instruction uh, of, uh, of learning how to uh, set the, the torches and the set up, you know, select a tip and all that sort of thing. After learning how to do all that, uh, the proper procedure is to learn how to do what we call puddling. Okay. Does that make any sense? Puddling? liquid uh, metal puddling exactly correct it's exactly correct now what we're going to do is use this material and use the torch and we're going to hold the torch on the material and we're actually going to create a little puddle of metal now remember i told you in order to weld you have to be able to return the material to its molten state at least in that area where you're going to take and, and uh, where you're going to make the weld uh so i have another question is it important uh, when you're uh, doing uh, oxyacetylene welding that your surface be clean uh, it really isn't because oxyacetylene welding has done at such a high temperature that it'll almost burn. It's always nice if it's cleaner and all that kind but of I stuff. But I mean, like as opposed to heliarch, it has to be really clean. Okay, this and you're getting and you're getting way ahead of our audience because they right. don't know that yet. It's not as crucial. No, it isn't crucial at all because in th this case, the temperature of the torch is so high oh, that it'll okay. burn up any paint or grease or grime. And what Christine is referring to, when we get a little bit further uh, with our welding lessons and we get into heliarch welding where we weld aluminum, the problem with aluminum is aluminum melts at 1,200 degrees, and oftentimes there are many paints and greases that don't melt till 17, 18, 1900 degrees. So you end up with all that in your weld. And aluminum, the, the, the one hard and fast rule for welding aluminum is that it's got to be clean, clean, clean. And I mean hospital clean because the, the area where you're melting the metal, it is not hot enough to get all the contaminants out of there and it will be in the weld and you'll have a porous, weak weld. But we're getting way ahead of ourselves. So okay, yes. Can I ask yes. a question? Um, 
once you've got the puddle formed, I mean, it's it's now in its molten form, is there a time length you have before it'll harden up again? Do you have to weld quickly? or Do you know what I'm saying? I know exactly what you're saying. It's an excellent question. Uh, you'll find out as we do this now that you're going to, that there are going to be three ways that you control the heat. Do you control the heat, obviously, with the size of the tip that you select? That's one way of controlling the heat. You'll also control the heat with the angle of the torch. If you've got it straight up and down to the metal with all the heat going right into the metal, or if you've got it at an angle like this where a lot of the heat is kind of glancing off of it, that's another way to control it. And a third way to control it is the height that you are away from the metal. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, what you do with the, th is after you form that puddle, and what, what puddling is called is you'll take that puddle, once you get the puddle, is I'm going to ask you to take and move it along. Now, in a welding class, what they'll do, and we're not going to do all that, obviously, we're not going to try to make welders out of it. We want to give you the idea of what's involved with this, and hopefully our audience, if anybody's interested in learning how to weld, that they'll pursue it further, and they'll have a good grasp for what they're going to learn. Uh, in, a, in a welding school, though, you would go back and forth and back and forth and move that puddle all over the place. You're not moving the puddle. You're just making the other areas of the metal molten. Well, that's correct, but, but it will look to you with the torch like you're pushing, it's almost like pushing a water droplet along. It'll look like you're pushing the water droplet you along. You the, the, the part behind it has already turned hard already? Oh, absolutely. And that's why it looks like you're following a, a puddle around. Exactly. That, that, yeah, okay. Well, okay, that, Angie, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're, we're, we're ready to take a look at that? Oh, yeah. Okay, uh, I'm going to have to take and do a couple of things here first. Uh, so, um, uh, Gee, should we put your video piece in that? No, no, let's wait just a little bit. <laughs> uh, we'll hold their attention a little while longer before we pop it on them, right? <laughs> okay, we, we, we don't want to lose them. We've em. got them fascinated with this. You think? We haven't lost them. Okay, well, maybe we, maybe we should hold Angie's video for next week then. No, 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 don't go that far. <laughs> you want it on this week? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, don't go away, folks. We're going to be right back. Bill had to take a moment to gather up welding goggles. I wonder if the girls actually do end up welding. All right, we're back, and uh, I've got the goggles now, and we're going to take and show the girls how to puddle, okay? Now, Christine, by the way, these goggles are something that we use for gas welding aluminum, not helioric welding, for gas welding aluminum. I'll explain all that in the future show. It's a little more complicated. And it's really not the thing to use to look at this, but for right now, you got to, and you got to keep that in my mouth. But for right now, uh, I want you to just take and hold that up to you and watch what I'm doing. All right. Well, what's Angie going to? Well, do? one at a time. All right. Okay. Now, Angie, if you can hold that microphone there, again, we're going to take and crack the acetylene gauge. Open up the acetylene until the, until it starts to feather at the end. Add the oxygen. Now you see the three distinct cones there? Uh, Angie, can you see those? Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna take in one inside the other, right? By adding more oxygen. Right. See it go inside the other one? Hmm. See it? Okay, now I'm gonna go and actually make a puddle. You see the puddle, Christine? Yeah. It's amazing. You see the puddle? It is. It's like like and, it's being chased. And uh, right, and I'm moving it along. Hmm. All right, that's enough of that now. All right. Now it's at a little bit of an awkward angle, uh, so we could show it to the camera. I won't have you guys doing it at that awkward angle. Uh, I will lay it down flat so you guys can give it a try. But uh, I don't know, Dan, can you come in tight on the camera shot on this, uh, what we did here? Um, we actually turned the metal molten, mm -hmm. and that's what you saw when you saw it in a wet form. And then I went and moved it along with the torch, and, and what was happening was it was cooling behind and hardening again, and uh, heating and turning to molten state as we moved the torch along. And it looks like you're pushing a water droplet along. I don't know how visible that was to the camera. Uh, Dan, maybe, you, yeah, oh, he's giving me a thumbs up. It apparently was visible. Bill, okay. you don't yeah. use any uh, welding rod in this uh, type of uh, welding? Yes, you would, of course, but first we have to learn how to puddle. Oh. You have to learn the technique of forming the puddle without blowing a hole through the metal, Ooh. and moving the puddle along 
then we'll add the complication of adding the filler rod as you're going. Because remember, everything will burn, including steel. Steel burns too. In fact, when you're taking cutting steel, you're burning. Anything will burn if you either expose enough surface area or provide enough oxygen to it, including steel. Do you ever so, burn a hole anymore at this point? Yeah, I suppose. If you but, were honest, <laughs> once in a while. Is there any kind of metal alloy on this earth that we know of that can withstand heat and that will not melt at all? No. No. Uh, anything can be turned Don't be so positive. We don't know everything. Well, I agree. I agree completely. <laughs> but the point is on this is that um, in order to learn a technique of welding, you have to learn this first of moving the puddle along before we start adding the complication of adding filler rod to it. And the reason you add filler rod is for a couple of things. Sometimes when you're trying to take and fill in an area like in a corner or something. Uh, another thing is that as you're forming this puddle, remember, you are burning up a certain amount of that metal. So you have to add filler rod to replace that. Plus you want to add a little extra so that the weld ends up being stronger than the original material because in effect it ends up being thicker. Now, before we go any farther with this, uh, and I'm going to let you guys try this now when we come back. But first, Angie, you know what time it is? Time for my video. Okay, and you're anxious for this, right? I haven't seen it yet. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I think you want to see it. Uh, anyway, folks, you're going to enjoy this. We've teased you long enough with this thing. Uh, let's take a look at Angie. And what are we going to call this? The Star Search video? Is that what we're going to call it? The Angie video. That's what we called it in the interview. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll do it that way. Uh, folks, you're going to enjoy this. Uh, don't go away. And we'll be right back. And like they're going to go away now. But when we come, <laughs> when it's over, come back. <laughs> She's a model, writer, and actress. Now let's enjoy a video essay about the charming, talented, popular, frequent co-host of Motorsports Unlimited, Angie Kay. Hi, I'm Angie Kay. I'm 19 years old and I studied filmmaking at Columbia College of Chicago. She's in the mood, no need to break it. I got a chance, I ought to take it. If she'll dance, we can make it. Come on, Queenie. I've participated in the Miss Teen Chicago pageant and I've been co-hosting the Motorsports Unlimited TV series for nearly a year. Come on, Queenie, let's shake it. I've performed in several music videos and enjoy dancing, figure skating, writing, and acting. Looking like a model on the cover of a magazine. She's too cute to be a minute over 17. Meanwhile, I'm still thinking. If it's a slow song, we'll omit it. If it's a rocker, I'd like to become a professional model and actress and later write and produce for TV and film. She's in the mood, no need to break it. I got a chance, I ought to take it. If she'll dance, we can make it. Come on, Queenie, let's shake it. Go! I hope you enjoyed my video. I'll see you again real soon. That was great. How many times did you have to change? 24 times. That must have been a lot of work. It was, but I enjoyed it. Now let's return to the shop and enjoy Chris's new look. Well, Angie, what do you think? Did the audience enjoy your video? I certainly hope so. You know, Angie, 19. What about it? Yeah, it's no wonder us guys get in trouble. <laughs> You looked great. I'm only teasing you. See what happens when you watch Angie's video? <laughs> I was going to say, Chris was the only one properly prepared for your video. Chris now is ready to start trying to puddle. And uh, Angie, I'm going to have you hold the microphone so I can help Christine with this. 
And remember, you've got to hold it very close to me. All right, well, not quite. There you go, that close. And again, I'm going to put these uh, on, and these are not really for this purpose. Uh, hopefully the audience won't uh, uh, pick up a bad habit. Christine, if you would pick up the torch, please. Now, and I want you to hold it a away from us as best you can. I'm trying desperately here real quick to uh, tighten this thing up. I think it's too loose. No, maybe I can live with it. Okay. Uh, Christine, mm -hmm. pick up the striker. Okay. Now, in fact, I'm going to help you this because you got the goggles on because we don't want to... Yeah, it's hard for me to uh, see everything. Uh, <laughs> okay, again, we're going to crack the acetylene. Open it up until the acetylene feathers. Ah, a little too much. Often with these long hoses, uh, you have to give it an extra second for the pressure to stabilize. Okay. Okay, Christine, now you should be able to see that more clearly as far as the cones, the one going inside of the other. I'm going to pull my goggles on so I can see it a little bit better. Why is it, uh, it oh, it's a different color because I'm looking through these. Uh, That's correct, but you should be able to see it very clearly now, right? Okay, right. do you see right down here in the base that little tiny cone in there? Yes. All right, and then this longer one yes. and then the, the long feathered uh -huh. one. All right, we've got to bring it when down Bill until... When Bill looked at this, he was disappointed the this audience cone goes couldn't see of that cones one. in the flame. He fixes it okay. next week. All right, we've got it, right? Yeah, as far as I can see, you have. Okay, now I want you to take the torch in your hand. Mm -hmm. Whoops. All right, right here, okay. like this, and go down on the steel. Now remember, down? yeah, go straight down. In fact, I'm going to help guide you a little bit, and you want to put that tip right onto the steel. Wow. Right onto the steel. Don't worry about it. Don't be afraid of it. How do you know how long to leave? When it here? gets wet. You see, it's wet now. Oh. Okay, now take and tilt, just tilt just a little bit this way and move, see it? Move that wet little puddle along. Don't, not too fast. You want the puddle to get about a quarter of an inch wide. It's really hard to see these glasses are kind of uh, shabby, scratchy. All right, do you get the idea though? Yeah. I could see though that it would take a lot of practice though in order to do it smoothly okay now i want uh a matter of fact uh, maybe we can uh tell the the uh, cameraman that uh, we're going to be right back uh, folks don't go away we're going to have angie give this a try uh <laughs> no more video that's all the video we'll be right back now it's my turn for the new look we're back now and it's angie's turn angie you look like you're ready to do this <laughs> I certainly hope so. I'm not wearing these for the fun of it. <laughs> okay, and Christine, you're going to have to hold the microphone now as I give Angie a little help and hold it near my mouth. Okay, Angie, I'm going to give you a little bit of help here. Mm -hmm. Now go ahead. Now I want you to take and tip straight the down. torch straight down because this is a very small tip and I did that deliberately so you guys be able to control it easily. Now you want to get the tip of that, get it even closer. Get the tip down closer. There you go. Now a little, there. Okay, see the water, see the puddle? Right. Can you see it? Yeah. All right, now you want to move it along. You want to keep it about a quarter of an inch wide. Now, nope, don't go too fast because if you go too fast, then you don't uh, have enough of a puddle. All right, now that's fairly easy to do, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, let's come on back up. All right, you can pull those off now. All right, unfortunately, we are just about at the end of, uh, end of the time. Uh, After Bill reviewed this footage 20 years ago, he was frustrated. He said if people can't see the welding torch flame while it's being adjusted or see the puddle develop, they can't learn how to weld. He spent the following week coming up with a solution. You'll see it next week. Unfortunately, we're out of time for this week with only enough left to acknowledge the fine work of those who helped digitize and update this show, including Tom McGrady, Art Lauschad, Sue Cassandra, our webmaster Frank Barbalace, and Samantha Bentley. Special thanks to JBTV's Jerry Bryant, Music is created for us by independent artists, Roger Pauly and Jerry Herbert. Of course, we have to take a moment to thank the stars of this edition of Motorsports Unlimited. 
Mei Chen, and our host, Bill Wilt. Me, I'm Janine Laushat, taking just a moment to acknowledge the work of those who participated in the original production 20 years ago. Dan Schmidt, Mark Spitzak, Ken Sawinski, Chuck Itzenthaler, Dennis Bohan, Steve Nelson, Frank Lombardo, and Kevin Wendorf. We also want to take just a moment to identify the girls who worked on the program so many years ago. Chris Schutz, Angie Kay, and Gina Niles. Thanks for watching. See you next week. This program made possible in part by support from the Chicagoland Toys for Tots Motorcycle Parade held on Western Avenue in Chicago the first Sunday in December. This program made possible in part by support from ABC Auto Parts located on Ashland Avenue at 138th Street in Blue Island, Illinois. This program made possible in part by support from Bridgestone Firestone and your local Bridgestone Firestone tire retailers. This program made possible in part by support from Copy That, located in the County Farm Plaza at County Farm Road and Army Trail Road in Carroll Stream, Illinois. Motorsports Unlimited is produced by Bill Wilt, president of the Motorsport Advancement Crusade. This program made possible in part by support from PB Food Products, located on 47th Street at Western Avenue in Chicago, Illinois. This program made possible in part by support from J.C. Whitney & Company, located just off I-80 at the Utica exit in LaSalle, Illinois. This program made possible in part by support from Jimmy's Red Hots, located on Grand Avenue and Pulaski Road in Chicago. Motorsports Unlimited was created to raise public consciousness, understanding, and appreciation of the motorsport community and their activities. You can contact us by email at msutv.com or you can write to Motorsport. P.O. Box 66242, Chicago, Illinois, 60666. We enjoy hearing from our audience. Please let us know what you think. Next week on Motorsports Unlimited, we're going to cover much of the same ground because I was disappointed after I reviewed the footage shot for this program when I realized you couldn't see the welding torch flame well enough to follow along with the adjustments. I remember it well. I spent a week coming up with a solution. See what you think next week on Motorsports Unlimited. So that's it, another edition of Motorsports Unlimited and the lovely ladies of Motorsports. And be with us next week because we'll have something real exciting. Bill Wilt's going to have the lovely ladies and just about anything can happen right here on Motorsports Unlimited. Every week at this time, we bring you the best in motorsports. So uh, be seeing you. Bye-bye. And uh, keep on rocking.